stock market weekly chart review for the week of November 7th through November 11th. This is uh, the S&P 500 on Yahoo Finance under this tab of holdings. And this shows us the sector weightings. So each, there's uh, different stock market sectors. We, we see them here, and then we see the percentage of each sector that makes up S&P 500. And we're looking at the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 can be used as an overall measure of the, of the stock market. And whatever the overall stock market's doing has a tendency to push a particular stock in that direction. So we, looking at the overall holdings, and we see that the technology sector is a little over, and okay, it's, a, it's about 20, 23, uh, a little over 23.5% of the S&P 500. So whatever the technology sector is doing, obviously that's going to have the most weight, most impact on what the S&P 500 does. And then from there, it's at healthcare, 15.40. And then from there, we're at financial services, 13.65, consumer cyclical, 10.58. And then we're dropping down to industrials, 8.68. And so I have a correlating ETF with each one of these sectors. This is for technology, this is for healthcare, this is for financials, this is for consumer discretionary, this is for the industrial segment. So we can get an idea based on what these different sectors are doing. We can get an idea of what the S&P 500 is going to do. You can do the same thing with, uh, let's say if you wanted to trade, I don't know, uh, if you wanted to trade XLI, you could do the same thing. You could look up, let's see, XLI. Under holdings. Ah, you might have to dig into it a little more. Uh, let's see, here we go. So instead of... Uh, sector weightings because it's all it's going to be all industrials you'd look here at the specific stocks so in this case what's the or some of the big big movers looks like you got almost five percent at honeywell united parcel union pacific so you could look at all of them if you want uh to try to make it easy I, I tend to look at the, like anywhere from three to five but based on what you know the top holdings are are doing in this particular uh, ETF you'll have a good idea of what this ETF is going to do so you can use that if you would like S&P 500 ended oh this is a weekly chart Right, so each one of these candlesticks, these red and green things, these represent uh, one week of trading information, and we're on a two-year time period, so two years going this way. <clears throat> uh, down here, this is volume, red and green stuff. This is a 200-day moving average. This is a 20-day moving average, and this is a 50-day moving average. And we see overall the S&P 500 had a strong up week. We had a bit of a bottom here, a bit of a bottom here. Not so much a not a flat W, right? But it's kind of like a <clears throat> pardon me, a bit of looking like a, a W pattern there. We got this red bar ignored, so I had a green bar down, and then another green bar. And what we got to see if it's going to be able to get over that where we bounced off the 200 day moving average back here. Opened this week, opened below the 20 day moving average and pushed up above it. 
our next next kind of line of resistance would be right in here maybe some somewhere in this 410 area and then of course we got that 50 day moving average if it starts uh if it gets over the 50 day moving average and and continues to stay over the 50 day moving average then we might see something like this start happening again maybe the technology sector uh, looking looking similar uh, a little more less less of the of a very obvious uh, W look but we had um, kind of prices pulled back to the 200 day moving average rallied up Sold off, sold off, and then boom, really shot up here. Healthcare. There we go. Look at that. That's much more of this W, like a double bottom right here. And uh, now this is uh, above all moving averages. So when when it's above all these moving averages or below all these mo below moving averages, the moving averages help to. Uh, help to support or resist in this case acting as some support and you can see with this long shadow of the candle up here so prices tried to trade all the way up to here this 135 but really getting rejected and which would kind of make sense because we see in this area there's this kind of price stickiness in that around that 135 area we see like time and time again it kind of gets stuck right in this right in that area the financials kind of have this W going on so these double bottoms started moving up now we're a bit above all three of those moving averages I have to see if it's gonna remain above all three of those moving averages it seems like around this the high 35 area low 36 tends to be point of resistance so we'll have to see if it's going to get stuck in there or if it's going to blast up through there xly uh possibly are we putting we got are we making two double bottoms here are we going to see the consumer discretionary sector push up like the other ones did at our bottom bottom not falling start rising up but right now we're we're below all three moving averages so it's got some it's got some some uh, heavy lifting to do to get through there but similar pattern sold off two green bars up drop down and then just ignoring this red bar and, and going up which is a pretty bullish sign XLY, look at that W. Whoop. So obviously this is a little lower than that. Broke through that 200-day moving average, but seemed to make these double bottoms here. Now we're we're above all three moving averages. But we're hitting this. Seems like right in this area is a lot. You can see how where the prices start overlapping, getting caught up right in here. So we'll have to see around this hundred dollar area. It's like the 98 to whatever, some something, 102, 104, somewhere in there. And getting close to the, the highs, re recent highs again. And what did that do to our line chart? So we see in our channel, this downward, downward uh, channel here. We see that the, we're testing that top part of the downward channel. So if it's going to remain out, like over here, tested, broke down again, over here, broke out quite a bit, but failed to stay out. So this is great. We'll get to see if it's going to, if it's going to fail or stay out. Uh, I don't think it'll necessarily fail next week. That, that'd be my my assumption I don't even I'm more leaning that it that it will fail than not fail although there's a lot of or there is at least talk of something that's gonna give the results similar to quantitative easing but 
it'll be done in a different way. It won't be called quantitative easing. And I think the Treasury is going to be doing it instead of the Fed and a lot of data data semantics. Uh, net result, if they do this, we'll probably see this like skyrocket up and continue to do stuff like this because um, I think here, here, uh, back here, uh, definitely here, this is not necessarily the result of what moved the market back in the 1970s and the 1980s. This is government or quasi-government institution stimulation. That's why everybody's hanging on to what the rates are going to be, what the rates. It's kind of like rates, rates down, stocks up. Rates up, stocks down. You know, kind of basic, maybe overly basic way to look at it. But this will be nice. You know, what I personally like is I enjoy not... I enjoy making more trades that are non-directional. I enjoy, I enjoy selling options more than making directional trades because selling options you can you can be you can make money if you're right selling options. You can make money if you're wrong selling options. It just depends how wrong you are. And I think it's a lot easier to pick where a stock won't move to in a certain amount of time. Or is highly unlikely to move in a certain amount of time versus you know where a stock will move uh, when you when you trade directionally unless unless um, it goes the direction you need and if you're using the options to trade directionally you need you need it to move the direction that that you're choosing and in the right amount of time frame and you need other things to be in alignment which it's not the it's not the hardest thing in the world it's it's doable but it's way easier to be profitable selling options. What's the trade-off? You got limited profits. You can make a whole lot more money faster when you're good at picking direction and you get the right things lined up. Selling options, it's easier to make money, but you don't make as much money. So if you want to learn more about that, consider paper trading. Try both. Uh, it's one is not necessarily better than the other. It just depends on what's going on in your life and uh, apply the right type of tr uh, strategy to your life situation, your personality, all these different you know factors like that. And uh, to be able to do both is great. So I do both, but definitely the majority, the bulk of the trades that I do are selling options, on selling cash secured put options on the stocks that I don't mind owning the rest of my life if I had to and if I get assigned. Um, nine times out of ten, I'll be selling uh, cover call options on them. And if you want some help with how to get that started, go to IHaveSuccess.com, download this, and watch that video that I linked to at one minute in this video, and get yourself started with uh, that playlist of how to sell cash secured put options. You guys have a fantastic weekend.